So it's been about a month since I uh, last posted a, a YouTube video. At that time, um, the mixing hot end was showing promise. I've managed to do a, a nine color vase. Still needed some work to do on the mixing, but it was promising and uh, at least I fixed all the leaks and so forth. So I'm rather hoping by now that I could have a bit more of an update on uh, where we are, but unfortunately, um, there have been a lot of uh, firmware problems and um, I'm no further forward with the hot ending. Probably fair to say the firmware has deteriorated to such an extent my printer is pretty much just an inanimate object. I can't use it at the moment. That may surprise you um, that I make those sort of comments about Duet firmware, especially people who know me. Uh, some of you will have seen my machine on Duet stand back in uh, the TCT show back in 2017 and again in 2019. And you'll also know that um, I've been using Duet products right through from their very first 06 board through the 085 Duet Generation 2 Ethernet Wi-Fi and now Duet Generation 3. But there's two reasons why I feel I need to point these things out in this video. Firstly, this YouTube channel and my blog, I, I do it to help other people. I don't get anything in return for doing this. I don't have anything like the 4,000 viewing hours a, a year that YouTube uses as a criteria before they actually give you any money. Um, so everything I do is just, it's just to help other people. It started years ago um, when I first got into 3D printing in the early days of RepRap. And I learned a lot from the community then, people like Knophead and Rich Rap and all those guys that were in the rep rap movement, shall we call it. And I've always used the same kind of philosophy where I, I try to give something back to the community. And if I you know, if I do something that works then I'll document it and show it and other people can copy it and hopefully that moves the hobby forward. Um, <clears throat> but by the same time and things that don't work or things that aren't fit for purpose or whatever um, I think it's also important that they get pointed out to people as well so for example the load balancing gantry that I did arguably that's just a waste of time doesn't actually improve print quality but I've documented it so if anyone in the future came up with a similar idea they could say that oh I don't know he's already tried it and it didn't really work so I can save myself some money by not doing it. Um, and at the moment, the Duet 3 falls into the category of things that don't work, sadly. I guess one slight caveat to that is that if you've only got a main board, um, you're not using any expansion boards, it might not be too bad. Um, but it's not just me that's having problems. You just look at the forum and there are all sorts of people with all sorts of problems with expansion boards. And it's, it's just not getting any better. The second reason for doing this video is to um, is to point these problems out to to the duet people, or particularly to DC42, who's the guy that does the firmware. Um, because the problem is the only way that one can uh, bring things to their attention is via the forum. Um, DC's signature says, do not send me email, do not send me a personal message, um, anything of that sort. So the only mechanism for reporting firmware problems is via the forum. But the problem is that DC, by his own admission, doesn't read every post. And... Um, And those that he does read, um, he, it seems that he just scans them and picks out the odd sentence. So quite often his recommendation on what to do or what to try um, is miss the fact that you've already done that, that you've already tried it. And then, uh, and then nothing else happens. So maybe DC42 or someone else in Duet will, will see this and, uh, and they'll become more aware of the problems that I'm having. Um, and other users as well, it's not just me. So on to the issues at hand. Um, well back in August I, uh, I did a video explaining the differences between uh, Duet 2 and Duet 3 and in that I pointed out some of the foibles and quirks and um, gotchas and um, limitations uh, with Duet 3. 
So, yeah, that was six months ago, so one would hope that a lot of those limitations or something had been addressed, but unfortunately that's not the case. One of the issues I had back then uh, was the step pulse frequency, or the maximum step pulse frequency. Um, it seemed that it wasn't as good as it had been on Duet 2, but the Duet guys just would not tell me what the step pulse frequency was. I asked repeatedly over and over again. And eventually, just before they announced uh, the firmware that fixed the problem, they announced what the step pulse frequency had actually been, or what it was with expansion boards, and it was appallingly bad. It was something like one-tenth of what it was with Duet 2. Now I'm told that's now fixed, but I can't tell because I need a working printer to evaluate it and I haven't got a working printer anymore um, because of other firmware issues. It's basically broken. And... But I'm mentioning it in this video because um, it, I'm trying to do this as a bit of an update on the mixing hot end as well. And when I first started to develop the hot end, I'd always thought that um, having a complicated mixing chamber could well mean that to relieve the pressure on the nozzle, the normal means of retracting filament uh, might not work, like reducing the pressure on the input to a complicated mixing chamber might not necessarily result in a reduction of pressure on the output of that chamber if there's lots of twists and turns and things. So from from the early days, the um, the high end had it was a, a, like a five point one arrangement where five of the inputs went through the mixing chamber and the fifth one, the sixth one rather, had a a direct pass straight through to the nozzle. The theory being that it would act like a plunger. So when I did a firmware retraction and retract all the filaments, that one would reduce the pressure on the nozzle. Um, but in the early days I had problems with stringing and I, I so, so I kind of abandoned that design. However, when they eventually published what the f uh, retraction, oh sorry, what the step pulse frequency was, um, obviously the problems I had with stringing were because retraction wasn't working because I was still using quite high micro stepping on the extruders. So it would be missing steps and having hiccups and all sorts of stuff doing retractions at those sort of speeds. So I'm going to have to go back at some point and uh, revisit that design with firmware that has a high enough step pulse frequency um, so that I can be confident that retractions are working properly and then I can reevaluate this extra sixth filament. So then that aside, um, so again, at, at that time, because I suspected very poor step pulse frequency, I couldn't, I couldn't move the z-axis or anything other than a sort of a crawl. Um, so I ended up changing the lead screws from one mil lead to two mil lead, which halved the number of steps per mil, which meant I could run it twice as fast um, without it choking. Shall we say? But even with that, I had a problem um, homing the Z axis. If I tried to run the Z axis at 600 mil a minute, which isn't particularly fast, it's um, 10 milliseconds, the firmware it wouldn't recognise when the Z, the Z stop switch triggered. And I had to drop the speed down to 300 mil a minute or 5 millisecond. Um, I uh, put a post on the forum at that time, n no user had an explanation for it and nobody from Duet um, even bothered to comment. Um, I, d I don't know what else to do, I didn't know what else to do to bring it to their attention so I come up with another workaround which was a, a micro switch on a swinging arm. So if the bed's more than a 100 mil. Um, down and I wrote a little macro so it will do um, 100 mil move and then it will check the state of the switch and if it's uh, not triggered it will do another 100 mil move at fairly fast speed. So I could use that workaround to get the bed within 100 mil of the nozzle um, and then I could home at a slow speed. Um, 
I didn't want to do the full home in at a slow speed because I've got 700 mil of travel and it would just take forever. So, But that's part of the problem. Whenever If I come up with a workaround, then the firmware never gets addressed. The, the problem never gets addressed. Right? So I've come up with a workaround. And, and this is a continuing um, thing. If, there, if there's a working around, then that's it. Nothing ever gets done. So it seems to me. So where are we now? Well, I've had my fingers burnt too many times with beta firmware um, over the years. I've used beta firmwares and then ended up with all sorts of problems and then getting blamed because I've been using a beta firmware. So um, I have waited patiently for um, stable firmware to get released, which it did about a month ago. That's uh, firmware 3.2, which I put on my machine on the 6th of January. Now the first thing I noticed was that the um, heater tuning algorithm had changed and instead of using a, an, an a parameter it uses an R parameter. Now I wasn't sure whether, um, whether that meant that my PID values that I had in my configuration file would still work with the new firmware or whether I had to tune the heaters as it doesn't say so, yeah, either way in the documentation so I thought I'd tune the heaters anyway. But they still haven't rectified the limitation um, about tuning heaters on expansion boards, which includes tool boards as well. And it, it kind of surprises me that it's been out 18 months now and you still can't do simple stuff like that. So anyway, to tune the heater, this, what I have to do is temporarily connect the heater to the main board. So basically I have to turn off the machine Disconnect the heater and the thermistor. Push the carriage back to close to being where the main board is so the wires will reach. Plug them into the main board. Turn the computer, uh, turn the printer back on again. Then change the configuration to suit the fact that the wires are now connected to the main board. Run the PID tuning. Note the values. Turn the computer off. Take the wires off the main board. Put them on the expansion board. Turn the computer back on. Uh, change the configuration back to reflect the fact that wires are now back on the expansion board and update the PID parameters. And I've got three hot ends. I've got the six input one, the two input one and a single input one. So they're all completely different. So I had to do that three times. So it took me a day just to tune the heaters. Anyway, I got it done because I've got to work around. That's the way it is. So then having, uh, having gone through that fiasco, um, I then wanted to try a, a print. Um, and I hadn't tried this two input hot end out. Um, so I thought, well, I'll try that and see what happens. So I put that on the printer and then, oh, then I wanted to home the printer. No, um, got homing failed message. So long story short, I spent hours and hours and hours tracking it down, um, disconnecting or, or rather commenting out one comment at a time until I found the problem. Now, it, it seems to work. At the end of the homing process, all the axes look like they have been flagged as homed, but I get a homing failed message. So I, I have no confidence in, in, in whether I'm, I can print like that or not. I don't know. So I, I spent hours um, tracking it down and I found um, one command, which was basically wait, um, set, the, set the heater temperature and wait. Because I use the nozzle as a probe, I need to soften the plastic so I heat it before I home it. And it was that M109 command, if I um, commented it out, then I didn't get the homing fail message. So I put a message on the forum, I started a new post about that. And DC's answer was to try um, substitute that command with a different command. Again, it was my fault for using this command, because it's now it's been deprecated and you should be using M116 and not M109. Which is fine, but then all the authors of uh, Slicers need to know that as well, because Slicers usually use M109. Oh, and anyway, and another user had the same problem, 
but not with M109, with some other command. He was getting homing failed message. Anyway, um, I substituted that M109 with an M116, and yes, that got rid of the homing failed message. So another workaround. So therefore, nothing much happens, does it? You know, you've got a workaround, then we're not going to fix it, basically, it seems. Anyway, about a week after that, I, uh, I tried to run a print and I got homing failed again. And this is because I use a different homing routine prior to running a print than a different to just doing a standalone print home. And I had already rectified that M109 thing. Um, I already changed it to M116. So there's somewhere there is another command in there that is triggering this homing failed message. And I posted an update on the forum to that effect, but nothing's happened, no response back. Um, so I don't know. So in theory, the printer doesn't home. Um, or rather, it, it, it comes up with a homing failed message. Do I print at that? Can I print with a homing failed message? What's gonna go wrong? I don't know. The axes look like they're homed, um, but if the thing print, I, I, I don't know. Um, and I can't find out, nobody will. There's no explanation for it, and there's no, nobody, it doesn't look like it's gonna get fixed. So I've tried again to do a print by disabling that pre-print homing routine. I don't do it, just warm everything up first and do a manual homing and then select a file to print and try printing. So I tried to do a print with the dual input hot end. Nothing came out of the nozzle. Uh, I'd never used that hot end before, so I thought, oh, it's got a blockage, something wrong with it anyway, don't. Forget it for now. I needed just to print a little box thing, a little case. So I took that high end off and put the single input on one, which I know works. It's dead simple. Just use a single extruder. Manually homed the printer, got everything warmed up, looked like it was gonna go. Tried to do the print, nothing coming out of the nozzle. Further investigation, um, extruder's running backwards. So if I hit um, warm the nozzle up and hit extrude, it retracts. And if I hit retract, it extrudes. So I tried a few things. I ran, um, re-ran the config file, M98P config G, run that again. Did that and it looked like the extruder, well, it seemed that only one pair of coils was being energized in. The extruder seemed that it was trying to move forward but it was very jerky like that. Um, and I thought, well, I must have somehow changed the configuration to get the extruder to run backwards. I, I couldn't really find out, couldn't really think why. So I just hit the power button, just cycled the power, fired up the printer again. I heated the nozzle. Well, I, I did it really quickly and the nozzle didn't really cool down. Um, so I simply cycled the power uh, and then tried to extrude some filament and this time it was working fine. So, and that's happened more often than not. If I, if I um, when I turn the printer on, I don't know which, whether the extruder's gonna run forward or backwards. It doesn't make any sense. There's no logic to it. Again, I, know I didn't have any of these problems with the previous firmware it's since firmware update. So again, I've, I've put a post on the forum to say, you know, this is, and it seems the fix is to put a delay in the configuration file, but I already have a delay in the configuration file. Um, I have a two second delay. It could be related to another firmware issue that another other users have come up with, and it's something to do with the way the board uh, boots. Now the main board boots quicker than the expansion boards, so that can screw things up. And that's all related to uh, CAM bus sync messages um, which was another firmware issue that appears to have been put right and that's what's caused this issue to come up I don't know so anyway I uh, so yeah it takes looking at the expansion boards after applying power it takes about two seconds 
for the sync light to um, start flashing to show that it's in sync. I think that's an indication of when it's booted. So I've put a five second delay in my configuration file. So it starts networking and then there's a five, work, five second delay before it calls the first um, command that addresses expansion boards, which is the one that um, sets the motor mapping, it's M584. That's what DC said to do. And his workaround that he said in the post was to run config G, run M98P config G. But I'd already told him in the original post, I've tried that and it doesn't work. Anyway, I've put a five second delay in it and that doesn't work either. So that's where I am at the moment. I've now got a printer that I get a homing file message when I home it more often than not, unless I come up with some sort of workaround and do it manually. And um, when I power it up, the extruder might run forward or it might run backwards, so kind of random. And um, so, um, Obviously, I can't. I can't print anything. I can't do anything with it now. So, quite where I go from here, I don't know. Um, my printer is uh, an inanimate pile of extrusion. Um, uh, so yeah, I've been struggling now for eighteen months with uh, Generation Three firmware. Um, seem to be going backwards rather than forwards with it. Seem to be getting more problems rather than less problems. So what to do now? I don't know. Um, I looked at Clipper and some other things, but that, that doesn't seem to support mixing hot end. Um, I, right now, I've just I've just put it under. I've just mothballed the printer because um, I can't use it. Uh, there's no point in trying to develop a mixing hot end um, when I can't even extrude with a single input hot end. Maybe I'll go and buy a Prusa or an Ender 3 or something and just scrap this. Or I've still got the Generation 2 duet board. Um, so I might I might just tear everything off and just put a single hot end on it with a duet Generation 2 board on it and, and just run it like that. Um, don't know, it's a shame. But... Um, that's where we are, as I say. Generation three has been out eighteen months now, and it's uh, I don't know, don't know where they're going with it. Anyway, so I guess um, all I can say is, if you're thinking of buying, well, I don't know. I, I'm I'm not going to give advice, um, but I'm not the only one that's got problems with Duet Gen 3.